Hey everybody, Nick Blazier here back with another Play and Explain video. Uh, hopefully you caught my interview with James McNaughton already uh, about what's going on with this Dream Champs thing. I'll talk about what we play a little bit. But I am playing him in our match. We're doing a round robin with nine different players. So we've got a seven point match to play. We'll talk about what I'm thinking about as we go. And, and yeah, yeah. So the whole Stream Champs idea is just that we found like nine people making content online and all that kind of stuff for, for backgammon and figured we'd get together and have a battle of the streamers. I've been looking for a reason to play more often, you know, for a while online. I haven't, WBIF wrapped up a little while ago for me anyway. I think also overall, they, they probably have a champion by now. So I'll have more when that comes to the next one. But yeah, yeah, um, I'm excited to, to have more content to make just playing here. <laughs> James in our interview is talking about the double slot. I saw he's looking at the 24-26-5. <laughs> but I think he said he's uh, playing like uh, Master 3 level or something like that. Only been playing two years, so pretty sharp that early on, you know. Um, but 4-1 is the correct split. He's going to get hit in the outfield. I'm starting off with a small advantage. These sixes, I think with three back already, it's probably fine to just play down and focus on offense. Um, yeah. I don't remember all the player names. I don't know everyone playing. I know Dan Rivera from Backgammon is beautiful is on here. Dirk Scheman, Reiner Birkel. Um, so lots of strong players in there. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that I might be doing pretty well, like second best in the sun. But I think Reiner could be better than me by now. I am hoping for double hits a lot of time here. Okay, there's the six for sure. And then maybe it's actually better to make a point with three back. I guess so. It's kind of confusing. Any five hits back, any five anchors, they're both pretty good, and it's like I get a lot of upside when I hit. Uh, maybe I'm just winning enough when I do this, though. So I'm going to do it like that. I'm not, I'm not certain about that one. If I get hit back, then I've, like, neutralized the checkers back in race advantage, so it feels like it's given up a little too much. Okay, he does not make the five points. He can make the 22. That seems pretty strong. I'd probably, I mean, we're hoping to make the, oh, he can make the 20. That's even better. I like his play. <laughs> when I'm rusty, like, I start to miss things like this quite a bit, I think. Um, okay, I think we're going to try to come around and make him break the anchor if he's going to hit us. I guess we can duplicate the fours that step up, not that he's in a big hurry to do that. Um, but we can play a simple game for now. Just a simple seven-point match we're playing, too. Oh, the 3-5 reaches now, bummer. I guess the five could hit either way. Yeah, it should be a lot stronger to hit and send a checker back than to just make like a fairly deep and weak board point. Definitely favor purity when we're this far ahead too. Okay, uh, I think the race is too close not to hit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I could think about making an anchor, but I'm slightly ahead in the race. I don't want the weaker anchor either. Um, I don't like having to risk sending another one back, but like I don't, whatever advantage I had, I don't think I have anymore, which is a bummer. Here, I think I should make a board point behind. I don't think I want to swap the mid for like a blocking point or anything like that. I do also want to get off the 22. It's a little too deep when I'm slightly ahead in the race. So I'm, I'm looking to still get my back checkers moving. We have landed in more or less a mutual holding game. Yeah, he can afford to just play simple and clean up and try to work his way around. Neither of us has really created much structure yet. 5-4. I wish this advanced to an anchor somewhere. Um, what do I want to do though? I think this seems really reasonable. I don't think I want to be stuck back on the 22 right now. A lot of times we just run off the 22 anyway, but I open up double fives, double threes can blitz five, three. I'll do a lot better. So I don't really like that part of it. Um, I don't know. I, I can't imagine using, using my last spare to play behind here. If I play the five out, then what is the four? It's something even more loose than this. So I, I really think this is my most productive play. Nine in the zone. I shouldn't be too scared yet. I have a better board for now, too. Yeah, and so here, I guess I'm like, yeah, like I think I'm going to be kind of happy to play a single checker back game and run, but it's a little scary because, of course, he has a better board and attacking options now that I don't have, so... Um, but it was always going to be tough to be ahead in the race and have a deeper anchor than him. So I think hopefully I've salvaged like the best option out of this. I don't think he needs to switch. Like the structure is so pure and nice and blocking me well. I think he wants to keep that. And I think I would just play the checkers down instead and have more outfield coverage. Yeah. 
feels a little early to give up the five point just to try to make a nine checkers in the zone kind of blitz thing, you know? It's going to be tough to follow up on. Not to mention when he doesn't, if I escape, which is like the worst thing that happens for him too, then it's still like a 50-50 game, you know? So I think there's just kind of no rush in this position to do anything too big, but I get a nice lucky roll and hop out. All right, uh, sorry, not ahead enough in the race, so I'm not thinking about anything here, really. This three is annoying. I can't be, I mean, I'd love to play Pierre and put something in front instead of playing behind to the three, um, but really this board is strong enough that I need to respect it maybe a little earlier in the game or if we had closer boards, something like that, if I still had an anchor. Plenty of places where it would be reasonable. And I shouldn't have any cubes until I have, in, like, four or less checkers on the midpoint here either. Because I just don't have any market losers, even though the race is getting good enough. So this could be a sequence where if I gain a little bit and get a checker home to safety, um, and he rolls like really low on the pips, I could have it. But I don't think, yeah, only nine pips is not really, um, maybe a close racing double if we were like completely contact free, but we're not. So the added contact is going to shift it outside that. 15 pips could be enough, though. Now this is a fairly clear racing cube and getting into pass territory. And so I think when I clear the mid safely, I do lose my market. My flexibility is a little bit weak here. Um, I think it's worth sending, though, on that market loss. But it should be small in either direction. It's kind of getting like borderline area. And the contact should be great for him still. So you should still have plenty of take value there. 6-5 next roll would be better. Right. I'll probably mostly just try to play what I think is right here too. Like I don't think I'm trying to adjust to a newer player or anything like this. I also haven't been like studying a ton. I've been working on my book, um, which may actually happen in the near term now. Still trying to put together a third roll score cubes book that I may continue into fourth roll normal score cubes from there. We'll see. I think I'm getting close to having all the positions done for the for the third roll score cubes part and then I have to write around that and see kind of what it looks like but I expect there'll be room for more in the book from there and that it's not going to like but I mean if it's a ton of data already maybe I'll just put it out like that if that's what feels like it makes sense but yeah like all the position work trying to like put that into a book is uh it's tedious so it slowed me down quite a bit <laughs> this idea in this book for a while um, okay, I think this is the best I can do still, but I am odd on the outside, so my sixes and fives are a problem. Can leave a shot. A little bit of hope for James. Six one fixes that. I think this is a zero position for next roll. Yeah, it doesn't look like I have too much attacking threat, so I like his play of just playing one around. Even if I could somehow close them out. I, I don't think the race is close enough to not stay for a little bit of contact. But I guess there aren't that many rolls that he can stay with for one more roll anyway. So it's one of these where winning chances are probably in the teens either way. At best, so yeah, it's tough to say. I think either can be fine. Yeah, my instinct is always to stay back, but it is clear that it's going to take two rolls before I could even, like, might leave a shot, you know? So, see his dilemma. Yep, and I wouldn't have been any closer, so I guess he's probably happy to play the pips efficiently after this particular sequence for me. And 18 is still just, like, one set of sixes catches that up on the pips, at least, you know? Fives? Yeah, that catches it up, too. Okay, I'm scared. Let's see. Like that. Threes is a pretty good response for me. Trying to hang on. I still jump on here and like play practice matches as like mainly speed gammon matches um, on heroes too. Um, 
I think I've been playing decent. I don't know what my like PR is there exactly, but but I've been I've been enjoying like the speed game and study again. It's just uh, I feel that part of my game sharpening again. Um, just like where are your instincts and in all of your decisions. I think that's some of the best study available in backgammon. Okay, it looks like it's gonna have to be sixes. Just like that on the side there. All right, I survived the first game. You get a nice little two zero four five away seven away lead. No big score adjustments to the opening, no matter what. But four one split tends to be right. Anyway, it's actually kind of hard to make that a slotting roll. There are exceptional situations, but four one is going to want to make the five point. Nice structural advantage to start. Then he immediately counteracts. I think I'll still be pretty happy to attack on his major split here. Uh, hitting in the outfield would be fine. Yeah, that's interesting. I think I didn't really think about anchoring. I just immediately thought about playing offense as well, but it's not unreasonable. Um, might just be, okay, he's going to regret it now. And this should be good enough for cube a lot of the time at at this score as well. So what am I doing for money here? I already have a huge board advantage, but he still has play with two checkers back. One of my market losers, probably like 5 4, 6 4, 6 1 could be. Double sixes, something like this, fives. Some escaping rolls. Maybe if I anchored with like a 6 5, that'd be good enough. Hmm. Nothing terrible for me. So this should be like a fairly persistent advantage, but I mean, really. I don't know. If I don't do much and he makes the bar point, then it feels like a pretty even game. So I guess I'm kind of on the fence whether or not this would be for money, so maybe I'll use the score to adjust to just rolling here. Um, I guess when I hit, I lose my market by a significant amount, probably, but maybe I'm not so upset. I don't think I'm, like, too good yet. Let's see. 4-1's boring. I think I want to make the eight, though I don't like it as much with the two. I don't think there's anything. I mean, I could play eight to four and step up and do something with the back checker instead, or I could come out to the bar point too. This could be one where it's nice to have the time if I get if he makes the bar point anyway, but I don't really want to be hit loose out there. So I think I'm just going to do this. Yeah, keep it simple. More material in the zone. Should he feel pressure to split too? But down this much in the race, and with this good of a board, I think the opportunity to split for James is over strategically. I think he should hope to stay relatively pure and build a prime. The 5-2 is not a particularly helpful role for that. I do think the way he's doing it is probably the best way. Uh, oh, I, maybe I like 11-9 to nine a little bit better, even though it's more shots. I don't like the stack of five, but I think it's the, the right general idea. I need to get moving. So there is an argument for not spending my last spare on the midpoint like this. Uh, fives are ugly next roll. So maybe I do just need to go here. He doesn't want to hit with the six as much as he did last time. My ace is not that good is a kind of a problem with it. But I think it's time to start spending pips from the back. I'm starting to get worried about running out of time to escape this. I think I'd prefer not to be getting hit here. But I will get some returns out of it. 3, 4, 3, 5, 2, 5, 1, 5, 1, 6. That's a whole bunch. 3, 1 is not too bad. 3, 6 is not too bad. 3, 5 is a good one. 3, 2 is a huge shot for him. He gets to upgrade to a 22-point anchor, and I have kind of nothing here now. Um, I wish I could. Wow, this is a tricky one. I can't get this guy to safety. The fours are out either way. Making the nine point is like a really nice piece of structure against the 22. But I don't think I can afford to leave three blots all over the place on the other side of the board to do that. But I have to leave blots no matter what. So, I mean, these checkers are almost, if I, if I played 18 to 14, then where are my other two? I'd have to like put it in front with the six. I just can't do that, I don't think. I don't want to give up the eight. I could give this up. It doesn't look like 18 to 14 is going to work. I'm not seeing a play I like with that. And so then maybe 13 to 5 is my safer play. 
and that leaves sixes and aces and not a whole lot of room anyway, which is starting to sell me on the idea of at least making some structure and keeping all the checkers alive. Is this that much more risky than just playing 13 to 5? I guess we should look at it for a second, but it does contain these checkers a little bit better when things go wrong. Um, so let's look at this. When I get hit here, a lot of times I might have to, like, there could be awkward break from the midpoint kind of rolls next time anyway. I don't know. Is it that many? It's not less shots because the aces hit anyway. Yeah, so I don't know. It's more blots, though, which can cause problems, and maybe I like end up with less flexibility to play from the midpoint a lot, but I'm going to take the piece of structure. I'm not sure. That's a difficult one for me. Got nice, relaxed time settings so I can think about things forever, too. <laughs> oh, is he thinking about the cube now? He is trailing, so I guess he's got incentive to think about should he be adjusting somehow but I'm not very clear on who the favorite is in this game maybe his 22 point anchor and being on roll with three blots around is enough but but my priming structure right now is pretty strong I don't know if he hits two and I fan with both like am I am I passing then I feel like I still have some play so Maybe everything hits after this play, too. I didn't think about that too much. But so the five does seem like it has to hit. I have no idea what to do with the two. And this is kind of the scenario where, like, if I fan, I still feel like I have a tough decision with the cube. I'm not sure if I should take or not because, I mean, this is not trivial to get these three checkers past my structure and around that way, you know? Like, my prime can hold. Though it is a little bit brittle with the two point. So maybe it's all really optimistic to make the nine, but I don't know. This feels strong to me. Okay, that's a beautiful shot. Now I think I am winning. Yep, two down for sure. And then does he want to hit loose? He probably has to to keep me to be able from being able to just escape with sixes. So this is not looking good for James. It's gonna be hard for me to find a recube in this game, at least. The whole like leading score dynamics. Can't really afford to send him a four. But this one's looking ugly. It's probably just going to be like too good a lot of the times. A little bit more quickly as this position cracks or deteriorates. Uh, okay, so I guess this is a better point than the eight for sure. Because now when he enters on the ace, I have part of a prime there. Fives don't play. Sixes are kind of forced to a bad place. So I guess this is where I want it. I was thinking about switching nine to eight, of course. But I think that gives him a little bit too much mobility. So I think this is the idea. All right, 6-3 pops out. Beautiful. He says his cube may have been a little optimistic, maybe. Um, I don't think I'm going to have any reasonable cubes here. I think I just have to play on. Uh, maybe I should clear this at some point. I think I want to start... Breaking contact a little bit here. I'm less, less worried about priming. Let's see. Ooh, three ones, not exactly what I had in mind. I could clear the seven. That looks pretty nice. If he pops out, though, I can have a lot of weird shot losers, though. So I think I should probably just do this. I don't know. It's annoying. Like, the three, four can be difficult to deal with. When I miss the hitting four, I can have, like, sixes that leave shots and things like that. This worked out pretty well. Telling him what I thought about that cube. Let's see. So we can take the four off? Yeah. No. Oh, I'm, I don't have all my checkers in. What am I talking about? Okay. So then this is the four for sure. All right, do I do I still have gammons here? I gotta start to pay attention to this. Like maybe I should be cashing this at some point because I can roll a six four and lose, you know. But I think there's enough gammons where I'm still too good here. 
And then if he ever gets to a point where clearly the gammons are saved, then I just cash this game. 6-4, not too bad. Yeah, so there's still four more outside. 2, 4, 6, like 11. I don't know. I think there's still gammons here. Yeah, it's not a good roll. Let's play for the gammon if we're playing for the gammon, right? Yeah, I don't think I can smooth it enough to like make four off not be awesome. All right, well, that makes things awkward, but I can always still like cash this if I want. But two, four, six, seven, eight, I think I'm still playing on. Okay. Can't do anything about. Uh, Taking a checker off, so we can do it that way. He only has four crossovers now. Yeah, so I still have to get lucky to win the gammon. So feels weird, weird playing on. I don't think I had a cash anywhere along the way there, but I wouldn't be too surprised, you know. I need like two sets to get this done. Ooh, there's one. Oh no, okay. <laughs> I'll give him the double. Give him an opportunity to take it, maybe. Okay, three away, seven away. I was doing a lesson with someone on this recently, just like it's a score where I still mainly believe just don't send it. Um, in the particular example he had sent, like even if you get a major advantage but haven't done anything with your 24-point checkers, it's like really hard to time that. So I'm probably not thinking about it until I have full freedom. And in this game, I just spent a bunch of ch uh, pips. He advanced his anchor. I'm stuck behind the prime. This is like, I think he's favorite now. So I need to get like lucky to get into it. But in a lot of cases too, maybe this is in pure enough where I would cash it if I can escape. But I mean, it's going to swing to too good quite a bit of the time. It's hard to like get all the way to an end game place where I prefer to cash it than maybe play on. That is a beautiful shot. I'm pretty sure the four is a lot better than the seven here, filling the gap. Okay. I still have work to do, though. I wonder, would I double this for money? Maybe with the much weaker anchor, I guess. I guess I would have to, I think. But it feels still takeable or playable. So I don't think I want to send it here, but I don't feel, like, super confident in that. I overestimate these a lot. I don't know exactly how to bring this home, either. Maybe the six should already come out there for distribution, because this is, like, a fairly dead checker on the four point. But maybe what's happened instead is I've forced him to like play and come to me, kind of. I do. The 6-4 might have had an easier time running if I didn't have a spare here, too. Maybe that's what I would have tried to do. But it's, he's so far down in the race that I don't think he wants to do that. I don't know. It's confusing. I guess I probably just don't want to come off my anchor. Okay, now I definitely would send this for money because I have market losers. If he leaves a shot. If he plays two behind, is it any different? It's just like a prime that's cracking through me and he's deeper and... Yeah, I think I'm doubling this for money. And then, is there any way he passes it? I don't think so, but I can like overestimate these so much. If he runs, maybe. Like, you just can't play a single checker back game with 20 pips deficit in the race. Like, what are you hoping to do, you know? This, he still has a prime. He has a pretty pure board. If I hit, he's in big trouble, but I still have to hop that prime. If I miss, if I miss, he's just given up the outfield, and he has kind of a lot of problems anyway. But if I roll like a six up, I might leave him shots and stuff like that. It's not that good. But my six three hits and my six one hits, my sixes are fine, of course. So six five, six four, six. 6-2 makes it to the 13 if I wanted to. I don't think I can do that. 6-5 is a big problem because then I probably have to come out from the back. And I don't really want to give up my anchor. Hmm. This seems really strong. Maybe there aren't so many gammons here or something like that too. But it is a bit on the volatility and maybe I'd prefer to lose my market. But when I just miss, like, I'm kind of fine. I still worked. I don't know. I don't know what to do with these scores. I better play it safe. 
Okay, and fives and sixes come out. So getting off of either of those looks nice. Uh, this gives me a double threes. No, it doesn't. I don't know. Whatever. All the same. And so now I'm probably too good, but I do have to escape the prime. So maybe it's actually worth cashing here. And usually he's going to enter and save a lot of Gavins anyway. This is another tricky one. How too good can I be? It feels like there's a little work to do to get home. Even if I, after I enter. I don't think there's enough work to do where he has enough wins to take this even at a trailing score, you know? Um, but I'm thinking about too good here. So if there is, if he's going to pause to think about it and maybe, then I think... I think that favors sending the cube a little more. I think that makes it, yeah, can negate some of my too good errors then. I'm talking about adjustments now. Two away, seven away. Going for a shutout in the first game. <laughs> Very tough to find a cube unless I get into a symbol like racing or holding game kind of end game. I think it's still best to just make the five point here. Maybe something score-based or something else, you know, with the split and everything. I feel like I saw this come up on the forums, but, I mean, I don't know. It's just such a good use of checkers, and when you, like, of course you don't want to be hit, but huge improvement, and when you're missed, the follow-up is so simple in that position that I think it's worth it. And this is not so bad either, though I did have a fairly good entry. Uh, how do I do this? I don't think I want to be attacked on the 20, so I'm tempted to, but I think I want to find some sort of pure play down this much in the race. So this is what I'm leaning toward. And this should help me build next time. And I think he's going to struggle to use the two to hit. Uh, maybe he'll want to do it here, but I get a lot of returns from the bar if he does. Kind of happy to provoke contact. Yeah, his 6 2 is just garbage otherwise. So I did improve that quite a bit. Some possibility that tactics actually argued for not leaving this somehow. Looking for sixes and ones from the roof. Yeah, the thing is, like, what else? There just isn't anything else. I like break your board behind seems, yeah. He is way ahead in the race. I don't know. This just seems like when it works, we're well on our way to winning, so. Okay, four comes in again. The three. The three, is it pure enough to just play to the three? Maybe we'll do this. I don't know. See, now this can just buy him tempo to get this checker around. I, this is probably an overplay. Because um, we can roll some awkward 3-4 that couldn't have cleaned everything up otherwise. I think my contact's good enough too, but it is possible that there's enough gammons where I'm not supposed to play this out with four t back and maybe a fifth. But I am going to play it. But this was the idea with bringing down two, I guess, is that maybe I get some more contact with this blot if he wants to do something else. It makes it a lot harder to... Use a 4 1 or a 5 1 to build or a 3 X or something like that. All right, he's stuck playing behind with it too. Yeah, I don't know. Sixes are somewhat duplicated, so we could try to make an excuse that way and like play down. I don't know. I think just trying to get home makes a lot of sense though here. Yeah. I think, I don't think I can leave the midpoint. I feel like I need to do this. I definitely want to hit one way or the other, but I think I need this structure with four backs. So I think I'm going to go like this, yeah. It's a lot of blots around, which can be a little bit scary at the score. But, okay, yeah, so now I can get in a lot of trouble. This is a bit of a whiff, though. What should he do with this? Probably just conservative and come home, but it must be tempting to make the two-point and try to get me to fan more. Okay, I'm going to fan on a two-point board twice. This is not a good way to shut the match out. i got to get in here and win somehow. What should we do here? Yeah, I guess the two is going to be part of it. Yeah. Maybe trying to clear the midpoint makes more sense, though. You don't have to leave a direct, though. So you can play two down and make the two. Feels like it makes a lot of sense. Five, two, five, three, four, three is what I'm looking for here. Just entering is pretty good, too. Oh, and I make the 15-point outpost. Okay. 
So if I can avoid uh, the pick and pass is going to be pretty strong here for him. But if I can be in while he's trying to clear the midpoint, he's going to have a lot of problems, which I think is why it was important to clear the midpoint last time. 5-2 is a beauty. Ooh, another good pick and pass roll, but he's going to run out of them, and his structure is going to deteriorate, and my holding game is going to look pretty strong. 5. I think that's what I want with my 5. What does my 4 going to do? I can't cover any board points. That's annoying. Okay. I get a break for a roll from the dancing. I'm looking to start building my board and getting ready. I think I like the gap here. I don't think I want to advance my anchor. So we'll play like this. All right, 4-2, can play safe, one more roll. Probably can't really justify paying now. It just seems like too much. But I don't know, it's also, you're just hoping for a set, so. It's ugly. Well, he's wowing something. I don't know what he wowed. Six, five, four, one. If he played to the seven, it's like some duplication, but then some indirects hit too. I just don't, I mean, it's really, how's it ever going to get worse than this? You know, like maybe you could roll a seven or something that gets a little further. There, there must be something better than paying now. I think I need to make the board point here. Yeah, I think I need to keep everything in the way. So three, two, even like I guess maybe this just wants to clear the six, but maybe it's pay now. I don't know. Maybe this is worse. This is pretty bad. Ones, threes, and fours though, and some indirects. Yeah. I think it's still less than some variations he was going for last time. It's been an ugly ride home, James. <laughs> I'm feeling good about my chances, though. Three, four. So I can hit them both. I will do that. I think I want both of them still because I need to buy time to bring this home. But I do need to start considering that I don't want to just like give ways for me to get back in the game. Maybe having aces not be allowed to switch is worth something here. Uh, this makes some building numbers and blocking potential for the three, so I'll go for that. Uh, let's start trying to get builders ready for the three. 4-3. I think I should hit, but I don't need the gammons. I'm still down in the race a whole bunch, so. But, like, playing safe looks a little too stiff here. I don't want to leave the 3-6-1-6 six, six anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to talk myself into some softer play. But I guess can I lose gammons if he hits two of them? He still has to enter both. I think this is okay. I think this is okay. All right. That worked out well. I'm ready to cover the back. There we go. My work here is done. There's probably no way to lose this anymore, right? I guess I should have been trying to break in there maybe, but... <laughs> Says it's been brutal. It's true, as it should be. Main for br mainly brutality in this game. Let's see. Uh, I don't think I need to trap the six off. It's tempting, but then every now and then he just rolls double sixes and has a game and could have just kept it simple. And I don't think we have two awkward rolls here, so. Plus my, I don't think I really need to be back there to contain for that idea either. Um, I think checkers off feels right here because he's going to have to run so often. He's got good distribution to attack and I get very front loaded if I play two to the deuce. But this of course is going to clear better the, so I don't know. I think I'm going to go for this because of his weak board and just assume that this is going to win more. Oh, I can remake it, but that's a little bit awkward. 
Should I remake that? Because I'm going to have a lot of shot levers next time then. Maybe I should just take one off and just have the robust position. Yeah. I don't know. 6 1. 5 4 is still stuck. Now I will make the double decker and hope to clear from the rear, I guess. Oh, and the 3 2 is finally going to go somewhere. That's funny. Okay. 3 2 clears. Things are looking good for one win on the streamer battle leaderboard. Yeah, you'll have to ask if you want to see other people like get in it. Maybe we could still add people. If Simon changes his mind or something like that. I don't know. Let us know what you think of the idea and what you want to see and what we should do and all that. Um, but yeah, okay. So in the end, I played okay. I'll be excited to see the the XG stats on that exactly if that comes out the same or where I made the mistakes. Six is not my best match for like full time, but when you're like leading, yeah, let me say uh, good match to James as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to study through that. I, I'm really, I wonder where I could have made big mistakes. Maybe I missed some cubes along the way or had some issues at those leading scores. That can always be the case. I could have been optimistic on my take in some of those. Um, Hopefully my checker play wasn't too bad. I don't remember having too many big dilemmas there, but uh, interesting match and it was fun. And yeah, we'll have more of these to come. So keep an eye on the channel and I should have at least eight play and explains coming over the next who knows how long. But thanks for tuning in and I'll see more of y'all soon. Bye everybody.